Hello YouTube, this is Just My Opinion UK. Today I am bringing you a review um, of the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean uh, reference number 232304221010001. Now this is the Omega Seamaster Professional Planet Ocean uh, 42mm with the calibre 8500 movement. This is the watch famously worn by Daniel Craig in the 2012 movie Skyfall. Now this watch is the second generation of uh, Amiga Planet Ocean. The first generation launched in 2005 and this particular model launched tail end of 2011. Uh, there is recently, uh, today being the 1st of April, uh, there is a recent launch of Planet Ocean, which was launched um, tail end of 2016. Um, now that, that line of Planet Ocean is the up-to-date version. This one is the second generation, so a little bit of a sweet spot in the Amiga brand, uh, because they are becoming quite, um, quite reasonably priced. This watch retails at £4,100. Uh, I bought this one pre-owned for £2,700 which is making it a very, very good pre-owned purchase. So, getting into the watch itself. Uh, now, please forgive if there's any fingerprints or anything. Um, I am going to get myself some of those um, white gloves that everyone seems to use for reviewing watches. Now, first thing to say about this watch is it's the 42mm, so it's a very, very nice size. The Planet Ocean is notoriously a large watch, um, being very, very... It's a very, very deep thickness watch, um, but the 42mm is just a nice, a really, really nice size to own. Really, really nice on the wrist. Gives a little bit more presence on the wrist than, say, an Amiga, uh, a Rolex Submariner or an Amiga Seamaster Professional. The Planet Ocean is just that bit more of a chunky watch. It's just got a bit more of a chunky feel, which is a good thing, because it, it definitely has a very quality feel about it as well. Now... This watch, it's got the ceramic, the ceramic bezel. Um, it's an automatic movement. It's the caliber 8500, which is an, an Amiga in-house um, movement based on the coaxial movement. It's got the helium escape valve at the 10 o'clock position. Uh, and it's got the screw down crown, which, now this is a very, very clever um, movement because obviously it's, it's you unscrew it, you do your, your winds to charge the watch. 30 to 40 winds will give you a full charge. If you pull it out one, one click, if you pull it out one click, and turn, you can just adjust the hour hands, which if you move in time zones is very, very handy. This is also how you change the date as well. So you can see there that the date changes back and forth, which is very, very good. Um, I love that. I think that is a really, a really cool feature. Very, very good for if you move in time zones, um, and it's very easy to change the date without actually stopping the the second hands from going. So you don't have to actually alter the time when you're moving time zones. So it is a very, very cool feature. Now, it's a hundred and twenty click uh, unidirectional bezel. So. Now this, this to me is the downfall of this watch. The bezel movement in comparison to something like a Rolex Submariner, it's just not as, I don't know, it, it just doesn't have the feel of the Rolex. It doesn't have the feel of the Rolex Submariner. Um, it, I mean, it's a small price to pay. It is, you know, how often are you gonna alter the bezel? Um, for myself, I do sometimes use the bezel for timing things. So I do sometimes turn the bezel, but it just doesn't have the crispness of something like a Submariner. It's just not as crisp. It's it's not as good. Um, which, I mean, granted, the Planet Ocean is £1,400 cheaper than the Submariner. But that said, you know, for a £4,100 watch, I would expect a little bit of a, bed, a, a better, a, a, you know, a bit better on the bezel. Um, it does feel a little bit on the cheap side, uh, does the does the bezel when, when you turn it. it do, no, there's nothing about this watch that looks cheap. Um, I mean, you can see on the on the dial, 
you know, all the numbers, the hands, you know, all the the Amiga and the Seamaster Professional, you know, everything on it is applied, um, which I think is really, really nice. You know, it's a really nice detail from, from Amiga. Amiga do this so well. They really do make some really attractive watches and the dials that they do is just superb. It, to me, it's one of Amiga's strong points. Now, we've obviously got the Sapphire Crystal and it's a domed Sapphire Crystal and it's got the anti-glare as well so it's you can just see that it's a it's a really nice very very clever how they do this and again this is what Amiga do so well and um, you can see there it's just incredible it, this is a stunning watch to look at it really really is um, now obviously it's a stainless steel you can get this watch in titanium but this this particular version is stainless steel now coming to the strap again it's not in the quality league of the Rolex Submariner. It does have a bit of a bit of movement in, and you get a little bit of a little bit of rattle with the, with this with the with the strap, but you know, with the bracelet, and it's, you know, it's nothing major. You can see through the links, but you know, like I said, it's nothing major. It's just when you come, you know, if you're comparing this to a Submariner, these are the little these are the little faults that you will find with the watch. Uh, the clasp is the traditional uh, Amiga clasp. Now, the earlier watches, the earlier Amigas, had the smaller print Amiga, and then have Professional, Seamaster, or whatever on the on the on the clasp. Now, the later ones just have the Amiga in capitals, and that's it. So it's the two two prongs. So open it, and then we've also got the extension for the divers. So and then it just folds and clicks like that. No, nope, not like that. I always struggle with these. That's it. So it's a nice, it's a, it's a good clasp, you know. It's got a good positive, good, good positive um, shut to it. It's, you know, it, it, it is a good clasp. Again, it's nothing in comparison to the Rolex uh, glide lock system. The Rolex do have the the edge on that one, but the one area where this watch is sort of stands apart a little bit is on the on the case back, which is just stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Um, display back, so you can see the caliber eight five zero zero there. Really, really, just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, really attractive movement. Uh, it's considering this watch has a 600 meter diving ability. You know, it's water res water resistant to 600 meters, and it has display back. It's just absolutely stunning, and it's so. You know, credit to Amiga, they've managed to make a, a watch that is 600 meter water uh, resistant with a display back. You know, at the end of the day, this is a tool watch. And it's got a display back, and it's not just got any display back. It's got such an attractive um, movement to it. You know, it really is so attractive. It's just a beautiful, beautiful watch. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is—it's a super cool watch. It's for two thousand seven hundred pounds pre-owned. For me, this is a bit of a—it's a bit of a bargain watch because you know, six hundred meters—that's two thousand feet. Um, you know that is that is that is into serious diving territory. That is a this is a serious tool watch. You know this isn't anything. Um, you know this isn't anything cheap. This is a this is a serious tool watch. This this is you know this is a professional diver's watch. Six hundred, you know six hundred meters is 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 pretty impressive. I should say on the caliber eight five zero zero movement, uh, th this watch has it's a sixty hour power reserve. Uh, again, incredible figures uh, in comparison to the real. You know, I've, 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 you know, I've picked on this watch and compared it to the Submariner. So now, in favour of this watch, the Submariner has a forty-two hour reserve. The the Rolex Submariner has a forty-two hour reserve. This at this watch has a sixty hour reserve. So this watch really does knock the Submariner out of the park for um, the power reserve on the movement. Um, anti-magnetic movement as well, uh, which is worth mentioning. Now, 600 meters dive, uh, you know, water resistance uh, against the Rolex Submariner, which is only 300 meters. 
So this watch does, although yes, the, the bezel isn't as, as good as what the Rolex is and the bracelet isn't quite as sophisticated as the, as the Submariner and the clasp isn't as clever, uh, remember this watch is £1,400 cheaper than the Rolex and also um, you know this does have the longer power reserve and the deeper uh, the 600 meters in comparison to the 300 meters so you know those are a couple of points to remember uh, on this watch it's a it's a really really quality piece um, it does sit quite quite large on the wrist I will say that it you know this is not a small watch this is not a um, for me I'm, I'm quite a biggish build so this fits me perfectly um, it's not a watch that you would wear under, under a suit, I don't think. I, you know, it's a sports watch. It is a it is a it is a diver's sports watch. It's something that you can wear with shorts and a t-shirt, with jeans. You can wear it with an open shirt. You can wear you know you can wear this on any occasion, uh, and you can you can wear this with a with a with a suit, no problem. But because of the depth, you might find it snags on shirts, jumpers, and so on. Now, if I was to I'll just take my Rolex off to give you a comparison shot. So there we have the pair. And now, stay tuned because I am going to be doing a direct comparison of these two watches um, in the coming days. But you can just see there the difference in in depth. They, they, there is quite a significant difference in the depth of the two watches. Um, but we'll, we'll come to doing the, the full comparison of both watches at a later date. Um, but yeah, really, really lovely, cool watch. It really is. Um, I'll just charge it and give you a loom, a loom shot, so you can see what it's like. So there you go. So you can see we've got the um, we've got the lovely blue, and we've got the green on the minute hand, and also at the top of the bezel. So it's got a really, really good crisp loom to it. Um, again, I'll just give the Rolex. A little bit of a charge and we'll compare the two so that we can see the Rolex versus the Amiga and like I said I will be doing a comparison of both watches so you can now you can see the Rolex is on the left and the Amiga is on the right so you know this is this is what I'm saying don't just think because it's an it's a Rolex it's going to win this competition hands down um, we have a long way to go with, the, with this comparison, so this is going to be an entirely different video, uh, a comparison between Amiga and Rolex, because I know many of you will be thinking that the Rolex will win that competition hands down. I have to say, it's going to be a close contest. You know, I'm not, I, I don't know yet who's going, to, who's going to win this contest, but I have a strong suspicion it's going to be very, very close. Um, it's going to be a very close comparison of the two watches. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to the Amiga, it's a superb watch, it really is. Uh, worn on the wrist of Daniel Craig in 2012 Skyfall, uh, so it's got some fame to it, uh, which which is always good because any watch that, ha that has a little bit of fame uh, is gonna be a collectible watch. It's going to be an investable watch. Um, if you've got a watch that, uh, if, you, if you're gonna buy an Amiga and you've got something that's linked to James Bond, space, the moon landings, anything like that, you've got, um, you know you've you've got money well invested if you've got a watch that's not really got any fame or you know nobody famous has worn it or anything like that you will tend to find that that watch might drop in value whereas others will hold on to the value a bit better now just going on to um, on a monetary uh, you know monetary subject this watch as i have stated is 4100 pounds uh, brand new and it is still available although i believe amiga have stopped producing it now they're just getting rid of stock um, because the new generation of Planet Ocean has been launched. Now, £4,100, you can pick this up pre-owned £2,700, which, you know, that is putting this watch in the same league as Tag Heuer, Aqua Racers, uh, the Amiga Seamaster Professional. Um, it's putting it in, you know, in that sort of ballpark with, with you know, with the Tudors as well and things like that. So, th for me, this watch pre-owned £2,700 is a bargain. You know, my faults with the watch is the bezel could be better. It's it's 120 clicks and it's fine. It does the job. But, you know, when you compare it to something like, 
you know the Rolex it's just leagues apart um, this will all be in the comparison review that I do with the two watches um, so yeah my, my, my biggest my biggest failing of the Amiga is the bezel the the um, bracelet a little bit of movement in the bracelet but nothing you know nothing drastic nothing drastic at all I mean it's a nice bracelet it's a nice brushed steel bracelet you know with with the polished end links it's it's a nice quality bracelet it's just it's it's you know in comparison to a Rolex um, if you've never owned a Rolex and you go straight into purchasing this watch you won't notice any of these things it's only if you've worn a Rolex and then you get this one you will notice a few things Having said that, you know there are there are things I can fault on the Rolex, um, which is why you know keep stay tuned. You know keep an eye out for the for the next video that follows. It's going to be a comparison of the two watches, um, which I think you'll find interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos and my other reviews, uh, and stay tuned for more quality content. Thank you for watching. This is just my opinion, UK.